Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this peekaboo card. This has actually been requested a lot. So I had a look on YouTube and I saw Dawn's Happy Thoughts. She's made one years and years ago. She's done a few. I checked out Jennifer Maguire and I couldn't see any that were five by seven. So I've done a five by seven version. And this is what I've come up with. So you open the front and it will change the image as it opens. So we've got Jerry the giraffe and then her friend. Wishing you a Merry Christmas. It's very, very fun. I did use alcohol markers with this one and I didn't kind of think that the bleed would show there. So I would say use either colour pencils or die cuts if you're gonna fill the aperture like I have. I'm still using these again on the next card but I'm gonna try and hide them a little bit so they're not as noticeable. I'm not too worried about this and I know the person that will receive it will not mind at all. But it's very, very fun and then on the back here you have your space to write your message and it stands up like so. So it's a kind of like a Z fold, you kind of keep it like that, that's how it would stand. You can see how the workings work, like so. Let me show you how to make this fun card. Okay, so first of all, let's get our paper sizes. So you'll want a piece of five by 10 and five eighths. Okay, I've actually extended this piece by one eighth of an inch, if anybody watched the Facebook Live. You want to score along the long side at seven inches. Then I've got this piece, which is again five by 11. You're going to just score this one right through the middle at five and a half. And you can just burnish all of these. This just becomes a little card blank. That one you can fold over like so. And then this piece here is five by seven and a quarter. And you just want to score it a quarter of an inch. And this is going to become the back of the card. So this is just our little tab to be able to uh, attach it to the rest. And just burnish that like so. Okay, so that's our three pieces. And then for the mats and layers, you'll want a piece that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. That's gonna go on the very front. This is for the back, so the red piece is that same size again, six and three quarters by four and three quarters. Then the white piece is six and a half by four and a half, and I've just stamped, and that will go on the back, like this one here. And then this piece is to mat this inside section here and that is four and three quarters again by five and a quarter so get all those ready okay so the papers I've used are from my perfect pop-ups paper pad you've got some really fun backgrounds there I love the snow background which is the one that I used on the front of this one here and then I'm using this candy cane one today okay so first of all you want this piece so the piece that you would have scored at seven inches okay and you're just going to fold and burnish like so, and you're actually going to end up having it this side. So this piece here is this piece here. So you wraps around the front and goes around the back. So you can see we've got our image, which is going to end up being on the inside here. And then on the front, we've got all of this. So what we want to do on this half, so when I lie that flat within this section here, but on the front, we're going to cut this aperture. Or so you know and this can be any shape you want I've done circles but there's no reason why you can't do squares you could do a couple of smaller circles you could have a you know like so and um, yeah it's entirely up to you how you want to do this so I've used just checking I got the right one there so this is two and a half diameter okay and I'm going to sit this one like so now I can feel where that card folds over there you don't want to go over that with the die. You don't want to cut into this. We'll open it up when we put it through the die machine, but it's good to keep it down so you can feel it, so I can see exactly where I need that to go. So I'm going to bring it down and have it about there. I think that's okay. So I think I'm going to go for there. That looks about right. I'm going to tack it just like so. All right. And then I'm just going to bring in, I'm going to do all the die cutting with you because usually I just kind of speed through it but if you've got if your plates are quite you know they've got marks on them and stuff just grab a piece of copy paper open this piece up and just sit it over that area that you want to cut now also don't run all of the card through it's kind of unnecessary and it you know it, anything you put through a die machine is going to have pressure put on it and it will just go over your score lines that you've already done and so on so I'm literally just going to put my cutting plate just over the circle die there so that's all that it will cut 
like so. And then it means the rest of the card is still lovely and it's just cut that away like so. Now we're going to be also covering this. So what you, what I would say actually, and what I did in the live, is you actually want to cover this with your pattern paper first. So I'll put a little pop up just to remind you there. I can just run this through. I can line that circle back up again. So I would say put this on first. But if you've got a thick pattern paper, or maybe your die machine isn't, you know, very strong to cut through multiple layers, then you would want to do it this way that I'm doing it now anyway. So I guess in a way it's good that I didn't because at least I can show you what you would do the circles separately. So I'm just adding my glue. I'm not worried that it's going to go over that circle. I'm just going to lay that down there like so. Just rub that away. Okay, and then all I can do then is grab that die flip it over and I'm just going to lock it in to that circle. It kind of clips in, I can feel it, like so. And then I'm going to pop that little bit of tape on there again and just do exactly the same, run that through the machine. Okay, so there we have our aperture, we have our pattern paper. So there's two ways to do it there, depending on the machine you're using. And then obviously you've got these bits here that you can keep for something else. Okay, next you want this piece, which is that just that card blank, and I'm just going to burnish that one there. And you want to grab your pattern paper and cover the inside. I'm actually going to change and use this one here. So that's that four and three quarters by five and a quarter piece. And close that one up. Now what you're going to do is grab this piece and you're going to sit it. So this is the opening you want on the right hand side, okay, you've got your folded side here on the left. Pop it in here, don't worry about this piece, just pop that out and just line it up with this end. Okay, so you see I've got that piece, the fold there, just, just lying inside there. So with that all lined up perfectly, you then want to draw around this one. And then using that same die, you're going to line it up with your pencil line and you're going to run it through your die machine. So don't worry again if it doesn't cut all the way through because you can just open it up and run it through again afterwards. But I'm just going to lay that down there and run that through the machine. Okay, so I take that away. And then you can see that it's cut that circle there. It's kind of gone through. I could probably push it if I wanted, but all I'm going to do now is that will lock in. You just can let it kind of find its place. Pop another little bit of tape on and then run it through again. Okay, so now we have that with two circles that perfectly line up. Now we can get this piece and we're going to stick it back over there. So on the front of this one, all of this section here, you're going to add glue. And again, making sure, just pop that piece out. Just lay this over the top so it lines up with the edge. And you can just, you know, use the circle as a guide as well. You can see there what you should have. So this just opens now with the front of it attached to this piece. Okay, and it should all lay down into that five by seven size. Then what you can do is get this piece, which has got that tab, and if you grab some red tape or double-sided tape or even liquid glue, but just run it along that tab. And it's just a deconstructed five by seven card because this is the back now that you're going to add on. So just take the backing off of there, and then with it open. On the back of this piece, okay, so that little card, I'm just going to lay, lay this down and just line it up with that score line. Make sure the top and the bottom marry up. And then you can just fold that one back around. And if you just go in there, you can just burnish it. Now it should all lie down nicely, like so. Now also what you can do is if you open it up where you've got this piece here, if you pop a little bit of tape just on top of that 
kind of tab piece that you've just stuck down and we won't stick this yet we'll do this last so if it's double sided tape just leave it like so but we will end up attaching it but for the minute um, yeah just leave it open in case you want you need to feel that you want to get inside the card for some reason so now we can start decorating it so I've got my two images here of Horace and I'm going to have this one it's going to be the one that you see at the very start and then when it flips open it will be this one so what you want to do is uh, this time I've cut my circles to the you don't have to do it like this you could stamp directly onto this you could get your stamp now and stamp in there I wouldn't recommend that if you're using alcohol markers if you're using colour pencils then fine and it might be a, something that's already coloured you know you've cut it from a, a kit or something then you can just stick these straight in but on the live I cut these pieces with the next size up circle so this one here and if you would prefer that I'll just tell you the measurement of this one so it's about three inches and then I slotted them in and lined them up so you could see the image. This time I've cut them the same size and I'm just going to add some glue to the back and then I'm going to pop it in here and it will just fit perfectly into that space at the back. But I can just make sure it's all lined up, which it is, like so. And then when I open it, This area is now where I want to stick this one. So again, I'm going to add my glue and pop that one in there. And just lift it up slightly just to make sure it does go where it's supposed to. Just give that a minute to dry. And you can see now when you open it, you get your two different images. Okay, so whilst that's drying I'm going to stick down my frames. These here I just cut with those, both those circles, so the original one and then the next size up, put a little bit of tape on them and I just cut them using some of the self-adhesive glitter card here by Dovecraft. But because it's going on a card and you know I just, I don't always trust the adhesive that's on these so I like to add my own glue on top so I'm just going to, I'll show you this one but I will then do the rest um, and just speed the video up. So I'm just going to run some glue around the edge there. And then just lay that one over the top. And I'll do the same with this one in here. So I'm now going to pop the video on high speed and I'm going to bring in all of these elements here that I've already prepared and I'll just show you what I've used. So the lovely big bow there, just love it. <laughs> it's down there as well. And it's this one from the Scene Builders stamp set. I've got some other ones there as well. And then obviously I've used Jerry and Horace there. And then I've used the props for all of these bits here. So you see the hat, the gingerbread man, and I've also got the present there as well. I was gonna use the ho 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 and do some mirror image stamping with it but if you do the mirror image of the of any writing it's obviously reversed so it didn't work out so anybody that's thinking I thought you were going to do that Sam because I did mention it during the live that's the reason why I've also got my galloping by and then I've got my and it says to say and then inside it will say Merry Christmas so I'm also going to get this stuck down on the very back and I'll be back when it's all finished Okay, so I'll show you what I've done. I really like it. <laughs> so I've added the little Christmas hats and then all of that detail and I've not gone into the circle there as much with the leaves so that when you open it you can only see a little bit. Again, I'm not too worried about that. 
but isn't it cute? Now a couple of little tips, obviously there's a lot of dimension to mine. I've curled all the edges here, I've used a thick 300 GSM cardstock and I've used hot glue but this will fit perfectly into one of my box envelopes and I will link them but it will also still go in a normal envelope. I like to call them my bouncy envelopes so when you make one sit this inside the envelope and then fold the sides over and that way you will kind of shape the envelope to the card rather than trying to squeeze it into one that you would have stuck down beforehand. Also a little tip that Jennifer Maguire mentioned, I don't need to do it but if when you open it it catches because when this piece slides it could catch on the circle here or I mean I've got that hat that I've stuck down so I, I, I did think it may well catch but it isn't. If it did the very back one here, so this circle here, if you pop a little bit of tape just over this edge here I'll just lay it down just to show you, just there, just a little bit. It will mean that this will slide when it opens. You can see it will slide over that bit there. So if you do find that you've got anything catching, then that's just a little tip to get around that. And then all you need to do now, once you've kind of finished with everything, this piece here is handy because it kind of holds it in shape a bit better and kind of keeps the workings in place. So see without it it's just kind of like this but now if I just stick that down it now that stays flat and flush and this opens. Okay so there are my two peekaboo cards perfect for any animal lover or if anybody just wants more of a comical style and I also just wanted to show you ways that you can use Jerry and Horace because obviously these came out very early in the year and I just want to show you ways that you can incorporate them into your Christmas cards so I hope you like these ones from me I'll just show you one more time there's Horace and then Jerry and they're lots of fun. So thanks for watching. I'll link everything that I've used in the description box below. I'll also pop up a couple of other cards that you might enjoy here. And we'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Bye.